Even within one key, often a composer will enrich the harmony in the local way by preceding one of the chords in the main key with its own dominant. If the hollowing harmonies don't cadence in the new key, but rather stay in the old one, this is called tonicization. These very local dominants are referred to as secondary dominants. They can be said to tonicize the chord in question for a very short time. Here are two examples. Here the IV chord at the start of measure 2 is preceded by its own dominant, but there immediately follows a clear cadence in the home key in C. Notice that the B flat is approached and resolved stepwise. It's a very local detail. It's also easier to sing presented in this way. In this example, in B flat major, the C minor chord on the second beat of measure 2 is preceded by its own dominant. Based on what we know up to here, the following music could go on in several different ways. It could confirm C minor as the new tonic by staying there for a while and cadencing, or it could do what happens here, simply proving to be a detail in the overall B flat phrase. We've already seen in a previous lesson how repeated harmonic patterns, sequences, can continue for a while without punctuation. The sequences we saw then all stayed in one key, but a sequence can also change accidentals, creating little moments that touch on other keys without necessarily landing there definitively. Here are three variants of the same sequence. First example is a 5-6 sequence, simply rising through four steps in B-flat. In this version, still a 5-6 sequence, the accidentals change at every step. Note that the overall effect is tonally fluid. By the time we get to the fourth bar, it's hard to say which note is the tonic, since they all seem to have equal weight. Only what follows will clarify the situation. In this last version, only one accidental changes, the E natural in the second bar. While this in itself would not really be enough to feel like the music has modulated, by adding a cadential progression at the end, the music can now be said to modulate to F major. So a sequence can be a useful tool for modulation as long as the destination key is subsequently confirmed by a clear cadential progression. There are also sometimes sections within larger pieces where their tonality remains unstable for a while as the mute passes through several different keys, staying in none of them. This kind of continuous modulation has a restless effect that can be very useful in raising the temperature during, say, the development section of a sonata form, where the music needs to become more intense. This effect is easy to recognize, since the music doesn't cadence or stay in any one place for long. What's interesting, from a formal point of view, is how a more stable region is eventually established when the music finally settles down again. In practice, there is every gradation of modulation and tonicization, from a short secondary dominant up to modulations that last a large part of a given movement. The differences are matters of degree. The process is the same. Many textbooks present tonicization and modulation as a binary opposition. If we see them rather as two points on a continuum, the whole notion of modulation becomes more powerful. As we will see in the chapter on chromatic modulation, it can even be applied to music that is not tonal in the classic sense. Mm -hmm.